Part of make your first Unreal Tournament 3 editor level. Um, if you haven't watched my first part, I, I would advise that you actually watch it because I'm going to work, keep working on the level we made in the first part. So if you don't watch it, it will actually be kind of hard for you to follow. Um, this part will actually be mostly about meshes, texturing, and making your level look more appealing to the eyes. For because of the way it looks now, it's not really going to win any awards for originality, because it's basically a wall with checkerboard textures. Um, the first thing I wanted to want to talk about is something called the generic browser up next to the green funny K. Uh, you want to click that. That's the first thing we're going to do because the first thing we're going to do in this level, is, or the second thing, is to texture our walls. Um, when you open the generic browser, you get to this menu, uh, which has a lot of gray text and shouldn't really mean that much to you unless you've actually worked with this. Um, all of these contain textures and meshes and things that you can place in your level to make it look like a level. Uh, it's not as e straightforward to use if you haven't been taught how to use it because it's kind of hard to see what you can use and not use in a way. Uh, the first thing I want you to do is to see if we can find something called walls. See, we've got... We'll do floors first, because I found floor 2. You're going to right click it, and then click fully load. That will just import all of the floor meshes and textures. Let's make a rocky floor. Then you just left click the floor so it, got, it has this nice purple tint. Then you can look at your textures. The textures are the circles, the balls with the textures on them, and the meshes are these. That These are the objects you can place. First of all, let's select a texture. When applying a texture, as I said, you just cl left click your floor and then you can basically just click whatever texture you want. We'll use the M underline HU underline floor underline BSP. Uh, actually no we won't because that's not a good texture for what I'm about to show you. We'll use the sidewalk. Uh, a problem now is that it's obvious that the texture is a bit big. So what we're gonna do we're gonna resize it. Now go have it highlighted with as just as you did last time. Right click and click surfa surface properties. And in here you can actually resize and flip your texture. What we're gonna do is going down to scaling. Try that's one, that's what the way it is now. We're gonna put it to 0.5. Click apply. That's a bit small as you can see. Let's see if one was the one I don't think it was. Nope. That's pretty much too small. We'll just do this until we can actually find something that looks decent. Let's see. Let's put it to four. It's a bit bit smaller than the last one, but still pretty big. And then another thing I want you to do is to go up to rotation and rotate it 90 degrees so it actually looks a bit more straight. And we'll say that this will be our floor for this le level. So if you build and then click try, you can see for yourself how it feels and how it looks. I would personally make it a bit smaller, but for just showing how you place it, this will work fine. And then we'll have to do our walls. See if we can find the walls. Shouldn't be that bad. Shouldn't be that hard, I should say. And we will just use Deco, LT Deco. They can work. they work a lot. Work rather well. Let's see. Yeah, this could work. Uh, we'll use them. They're not necessarily wall textures, but 
for this they actually kind of work now instead of just clicking like uh, and then clicking there and doing it all over again you can just right click select surfaces adjacent walls and I'll just do it for you it'll just mark all the walls now we've got a floor and some wall textures time for the ceiling now what should we do with the ceiling I prefer going to mech because there's a lot of cool textures here let's see if we can find something usable let's see Nope. No. Try. You also should try to find something that matches your theme. Since we've got this cold, robotic, depressing scene, we should probably keep to it. Keep using it. So we'll try. Does that look? Doesn't look good. Um. To open base and see if we can find something, and ju just use whatever you feel like. Really doesn't matter. That should work. That looks okay. And now we've got textures on all the walls. Mm, for this middle part, I want to do something special. I want to use some really cool textures while still being in base. We're gonna apply the glow just because we can. It'll also have a nice see-through feel to it which is neat. We'll do that for all the different parts of the middle. See, there we go. Looks <laughs> looks horrible, but serves its point. Uh, the next part would we're going to do, be doing is to place some let's place some weapons on the map. If you want to do this, you click on act classes, which is next to generic. You need to find something called navigation point, and you got a lot of things in there. And you need not vehicle factory. That's if you want to make vehicles, and we're not. We're gonna do pickup factory, you see pickup factory, weapon pickup factory. You're not gonna double click it. You're just gonna click it once. Click on where you want it to be placed. Right click, and then it says add UT weapon pickup factory here. You'll add it. And it will be automatically placed right where it should be. And what you're going to do now, because the problem with it now is that it does not have um, any weapons. It's just a pickup factory. So you're going to click the weapon, the pickup factory, right click it. And UT pickup factory properties. I'm going to go in here. And you're going to find the weapon pickup factory tab click it and in right here it currently says none because there's no weapons in it and when you click that it will show you the name of all the weapons in the game we're gonna put it to shock rifle now let's build one more time click play let's find it and there you go you got a shock rifle And I finally actually hit the ball. Now, mm, the funny, cool thing is that since you've already placed it, you can just copy, paste it to the other side if you want another shock rifle. It doesn't really matter. There you go. Now we got two shock rifles. Uh, what we're going to do now is go back into navigation points. And we're going to click. Uh, let's see if we can find it again. Something called a path node. Path nodes are kind of useful to have. Uh, I'll take that. I'll do path nodes in my next tutorial because it's a bit it's a bit difficult to explain right away. It's basically a path node is something you place to make your bots not run into walls. It's basically tells your your bots where they're allowed to run. You know what? I'll just take it now. It's important. Since this is a two-player map currently, we'll click wherever you want add actor add path node that's your first path node and what you're gonna do is place it so it 
aiming towards the hole, you'll cop it. And you'll place another one on the other side. Cop it again, put one down here, cop it again, one here. And then instead of clicking just build all, I want you to click build paths. Because now it's just building your regular paths, the path nodes. And they're not visible, but when your bot starts now, he'll run between the nodes. He knows exactly how to get from A to B. Uh, you do not want to have too many nodes, because that can confuse the bots in a way that they'll try to jump over a wall to get to another node. And when it comes to nodes and spawns, you do not want any of them to be too low beneath the ground, because that will just mean that... When you when one of your bots spawn, they'll just die instantly, and that's not really cool. <laughs> it leaves a really funny pile of bodies, but it's not necessarily something you'd want. Uh, one of the last things I'll do, I'll show you how to place armor. That uh, we'll go back into navigation points, find pickup factory, UT pickup factory, and we'll click item pickup factory we'll do armor so you got helmet, shield, thigh pads and vest and a vest we'll click the helmet click where you want it to be and put it there make sure that it's right where you want it to be see if it's got what it's supposed to have inside of it and it probably does yep and we'll also copy it once so it will be balanced because believe it or not doing too many good things on one side will make your game rather unbalanced believe it or not it's kinda funny and f finally we're gonna be placing some something called static meshes a static mesh is basically a an object a 3d object uh, one of my favorite ones. Let's see. We'll go into. <sighs> what should we make? We'll do Deco 2. Fully load. Always fully load. Go down beneath the textures and you'll have some cool objects. What we're going to place now is. We're going to place a couple of signs. Always oh, good. That's a bit of atmosphere. You click the sign once, click where you want it to be, right click, add actor, and it says on the top, add static mesh. There you go. Let's get it into the map. There it is. Nice thing to do now is to go into your wireframe and see if it's where you want it to be. I've actually messed up when I decided to make this level because as you can see it's not perfectly aligned with the lines so you can actually not get it perfectly on. So a tip a tip is to when you make your level make sure that all of the lines are lined up with the lines on the wireframe. But again this will work for my me showing you how it's done. We'll resize it and then we'll go to the other side and we'll take the green one click it once and paste it on find it there it is and then resize it and as usual build and then close the generic browser because I will not show you anything else in it click play and there you go you got a level with textures, weapons, armor, and two pretty meshes. The final thing I'll show you will be what. By the way, remember to save a lot, all the time, preferably. Last thing I'll show you is something called cooking. Publish the map. Uh, you're gonna have to publish the map to actually be able to play it with bots or play it online. And you do this by clicking publish and you click yes obviously because you want it to be published and it should go pretty much 
automatic from here this thing just checks that it's saved in the right place and everything is in order for it to be used as a real map it's quite simple just takes a bit of time there we go and no zero errors zero warnings uh, in fact, it showed, showed green there means that my map is now cooked and ready to be played with bots or online. If there was something red, it would have meant that something went wrong. Most of the time, that's basically quite simply because you haven't saved your map in a tournament UT game unpublished cooked. You've saved it somewhere else or you've got a second copy of the map op saved somewhere else. This will make it impossible for Unreal to cook it. So make sure you've saved it in the right spot. Um, this was the end. This will be the end of my second tutorial video, and in my next video, I'll be talking about using static meshes to build a map without too many brushes, and how to make portals, because everybody loves portals. Thank you.